it's just not going to stop. It's just the start. And it's fascinating already to see that you have like these other banks who are going to offer the uh, ETFs to their clients or the Vanguard CEO stepping down, you know, a financial product that is now doing 500 million, you know, average a day net inflow. Like, how is that not your biggest signal? Like that, that is the validation of this thing. This thing. And that mm -hmm. I think frees up the energy to also enjoy life more than w when you are in this zero sum fiat mindset, yeah. basically. So that's Jack Dorsey, very nice to have you on. <laughs> the shapeshifter. <laughs> the shapeshifter. <laughs> there are lizard people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah jo it's... Joking about the shirt, of course. No. Yeah, I, um, I, I just told them uh, I didn't want to put it on yesterday because I know I knew Jack was coming so I thought okay I'm going to put it on today and then I saw like seven other guys so. with the shirt so I was like oh, never mind but it's fun it's fun it's fun to see the virality right like how uh, yeah how that how that goes but, yeah. Uh, yeah good shirt yeah. but fun to meet man this is a great yeah. uh, great space yep yeah. so Bram thank you for joining this is this is a fun little impromptu I'm glad we were able to have this work so yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't realize you were going to or forgot or whatever that you were going to be here and and now now I, you're here. So. I actually decided like two weeks ago or something. Oh, like that's I, why. I did, okay. Like my first conference was in a, bit, a Bitcoin conference was in Amsterdam, uh, like in October. So I've been in Bitcoin for ten years, but never been to a conference. But that was in like a bear market, so just only the crazy guys, <laughs> just crazy people are still there. But now this this setting and uh, the energy here is so cool. Like yesterday, the talks of Sailor and. Uh, Jack Mahler's like you feel the energy like I love how everyone is how do you say like developing their views and and ways of sharing um, you know how they understand Bitcoin and how they can explain it to others you know I think you are also one of those people that has their own way of explaining like basically I think how you got here right and then you're you're duplicating that and sharing that for other people um, you see that here as well, like people are evolving their, their story of how to explain why this is the biggest thing that we should pay attention to. So it's yeah. super fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. yeah, I feel the energy too. Um, I, I was telling someone earlier about how, to me, the fun thing with these conferences is actually not going to the speakers. It's actually yeah. hanging out with them, you know, whether it's behind stage or, or it's, you know, at dinners or on these shows. Mm. I mean, this is, this is why I do it. Like if it was just to come listen and, and party and then go home that's well, a very expensive people, party yeah yeah, yeah. but also <laughs> yeah. see people in real life right like yeah, i think yeah. uh, for a lot of people uh, you know especially if i talk for myself like irl my bitcoin circle is like two other people online it's thousands of people right yeah. um but sometimes it feels pretty lonely you know like when you you also have really big thoughts you know like sometimes you end up somewhere when you are alone and in a thought like oh could could bitcoin really be this thing could it be this big you know and then it's hard to challenge yourself and so it's good if you talk to someone else to check you know like does it make sense where i ended up with this with this reasoning and i think you know online that's nice and you can do that via chat or on twitter or you know sometimes you have like well i on my podcast i only have like remote conversations right mm -hmm. But now in real life, it's it's so cool to just meet those people that you met online in yeah. real life. That's just uh, it's just the best. It's so yeah. uh, so cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I fully agree. You know, and, and one of the, one of the fun things is talking with people who you respect, right? Like like you know, yeah. just just before we started recording, you know, Preston Pish was here. We were you know chatting for a little while, all of us, and you know, it's just like the, the fact you get to meet these people and get to share attention with them right you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like, like you you have focus on you they're focused on you and it's just that mutual respect and admiration of you know it doesn't matter how much money someone has no. it doesn't matter all that it's it's all about the ideas and it's yeah. all about working together and to find solutions yeah 100 yeah. percent. and i just talked to, <laughs> shared a fun story about like it's just another person you're just another dude you know like we, we all came from different places and backgrounds and understanding and you know education whatever but that doesn't really matter like when you connect with bitcoiners in real life there's an instant connection because you know that all these people did some sort of personal work right to to change their their previous world views or what they thought they knew was true or whatever like and and they ended up at bitcoin which is for a lot of people it's really a a 180 you know kind of like paradigm shift from what 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 you came from and so the connection with bitcoiners is is actually instant almost like 
I met people here and uh, like two days ago I talked with a guy for five hours we went for lunch another guy joined and we just we talked about all these super big things like nothing super superficial and it's just fun that you can go there um, just because you have like this this basic understanding of something that already changed like my individual uh, life and it and it touched already both of these other people's individual lives and now we are just connecting and sharing these thoughts and it's all with respect and interest and yeah just exploring thoughts basically and and these ideas and yeah. i think that's just the most rewarding thing to do because i think once you like integrate and understand that you don't know everything then like all doors open and you're interested in anything and that's also i think why you know the bitcoin rabbit hole is just an endless <laughs> endless yeah, source of knowledge and, uh, and and ideas. So it's just super fun, super fun yeah. to see these people. And also now to run into Preston, like I could share with him that he's one of my inspirations for starting a podcast, you know, like that's so fun to give back because I know that's really important, you know, like you don't know where your thoughts travel in the world or who you help think better or different. And I think that's fun also to, to share that with mm -hmm. people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I fully agree with that. So I know it's gonna be a shorter show, so I'd like to get right into it of... What's the idea that's been rolling around in your head right now? I mean, obviously, Bitcoin is number go up. Mm. I mean, we just had the best, in nominal terms, we just had the best month ever in Bitcoin. Yeah. So a lot of people are getting in. A lot of people are excited. ETFs approved, of course. Like, what What right now is the new thing on your mind, the idea that... I think there's two things. One really central idea is that, and kind of touch upon touches upon what I just said, like, it's all about individuals, like all these mm -hmm. companies, like the, the, the you know, the, the, these banks adopting the ETFs. It's not like the bank is like one entity, right? It's made up of all these individuals, basically, that have to be educated and challenged in, in a certain way for an institution like that to get there, right? Like it's not that Larry Fink says, oh, well, we're now going to go left. You know, we're going to put one leg. That's really how I see it, actually. Like we're going to put one leg in this new system because we understand that this other system that we did really, really well in and that, you know, to some degree, I think they also really exploited, of course, but that's a different conversation. The fact that they are doing that is huge. Like it was just these past few days that I actually really realized, like I don't have a finance or economics background. So, you know, there's people on Twitter like uh, Fred Krueger who know, like, know, <laughs> know these things. But for me, it's like, uh, I, I do have experience in like traditional finance and the fact that there's enough individuals aligned and like they signed off on certain things to actually get there. And of course, like fees, etc. you know, that's incentives for these companies. But that's just, that's just very, very big. Like there's, an, in, in each company, there are individuals that are into Bitcoin. In each government, there are individuals that are into Bitcoin. Uh, two days ago, I had a conversation about like uh, uh, Texas, you know, in, in, in countries like, should you report Bitcoin? What is gonna happen there? Like our government's gonna crack down, etc. But like those are all also individual people, right? So if you have a job as some tax, inspector and your wage is not rising but your costs are and you have to call like 20 bitcoiners uh, one day in the future and be like yeah where's your bitcoin you know and you get 20 answers like i lost it in a boating accident then you're gonna be like who are these crazy people and then you're gonna go from your shitty job that you have to call like all these crazy people and you go to the supermarket and you cannot afford your groceries and then you're going to be like well maybe this bitcoin thing is something i should look into you know and that is i think the in a sense the mind virus of bitcoin that that also this just sharing these thoughts like how did we get here like that's already for some people it's going to be triggering and then there'll be then they'll be like oh i should look into this more and that's how it spreads and i feel like there's going to be we are like in the chasm right we are in this gray area where we feel certain energy there's lots of locals at this conference as well uh, like a quarter of the tenants are also locals you know and they are clapping and they also feel that these other people feel something you know and i think we are in this space where on one side there's a lot happening with the capital and stuff but on one side this all these little individual personal journeys are also taking hold and i think that that is one of the biggest themes I've now been thinking about. Like that is that is 
that is what is the most important. So we have to continue making podcasts and continue writing <laughs> books and doing blog posts and all these things, you know, shit posting on Twitter, all these <laughs> things. Like we, we should c keep continuing that because we know that we ended up somewhere and we think that this is valuable and we should commit to it. Like it's not the, the, the meme of, you know, um, what's the thing? Like it's inevitable, you know, like I, I don't believe in that. Like we have to... We have to continue. There's just 2,000 people here. That's nothing. You walk outside of this venue and there's people totally oblivious to what we're doing. So yeah. that's the, I think, yeah, that's probably the main thing where I'm at right now. Like this, just keep that in mind. And for me, it, it gives me motivation to just, yeah, keep talking about this. And uh, yeah, like what you said, like this month, the biggest monthly close. Yeah, it's wild. It's like, uh, it's just not going to stop. It's just the start. And it's fascinating already to see that you have like these other banks who are going to offer the uh, ETFs to their clients or the Vanguard CEO stepping down. You know, I mean, Bitcoiners are taking credit for it. I don't know if that's really the case, yeah, but it does signal <laughs> something. It signals yeah. something, you know, yeah. and it signals that you cannot stay behind. Like your competitors are doing something that is going to make them more money than you. They're going to eat from the products that you offer. And the fact that Bitcoin is already doing that within, I don't know how many trading days, but not that many. 37. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild, wild. Yeah, and yeah. also the other thing, the other subject I'm kind of on, which I also find just crazy is that I, I thought like, okay, ETFs, cool, and people are talking about it, but again, you know, like not, not my background. But then I thought, okay, the fact that Wall Street adopts an idea from an internet forum that got like got released 15 years ago on an internet forum into a financial product that is now doing 500 million you know average a day net inflow like how is that not your biggest signal like that that is the validation of this thing because all the individuals that have to be aligned to sign off on yes we're going to do this all did that and so that is crazy like there's nothing else that N no other idea in the world that did that. Yeah. So, whatever you think of ETFs and all, you know, with the ethos and self self custody and all these things, doesn't doesn't really matter because we already won in that sense. Like all these people capitulated. Yeah, the ca capitulation is up. Yeah, right? I, I think that's something that you know I hear all the time. Oh. Luke, everything's so slow. Hyper Bitcoinization is going to be so far away. I, I I agree. I think it's going to take a long time. But I I, I echo. That too is just that, you know, 15 years ago, this didn't exist. There were like eight people using it or whatever, yeah. right? Like it did not exist. Like if you look at the first, you know, whatever, a few thousand blocks, Bitcoin, like or more than that, actually, is that, you know, there was no, no transactions. Nobody use, was using it. You know, only Satoshi was mining. That's how he ended up with so many coins, right? There were, you know, I think it was, uh, shoot, what was it? I think it was like 1.7, 1.8 million Bitcoin were mined before it had a price, like, like or maybe yeah. 1.3, uh, you know, it was over a million coins yeah. that were mined before Bitcoin had a trading price, before its first price of six cents. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, so we had that 15 years ago, then five years ago, Wall Street hated it. Now they're doing, you know, a couple billion dollars a week. Hated it, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, quote unquote hated yeah. it. And, and now they're doing a couple billion dollars a week. I'm like, I fully agree with you. Like, yeah. it feels like it's so fast and that's why, to your point with the podcast is like that's why yeah. I enjoy these events is because frankly I think in five years we're going to look back you know this event's going to have 15,000 people it's going to be impossible to hang out with the people mm -hmm. that were those pioneers you know like you like Preston like like you know like, like also, Sailor and like all the plebs right mm -hmm. but also five yeah. years later yeah maybe there are no conferences anymore because like who is going to an internet conference now like no one. Or there locomotive no, conference. <laughs> there are, there, but there are no yeah. internet conferences anymore. In 1998, you had internet conferences, right? Yeah. But then you know that it, it's a mainstream uh, adopted thing. But yeah, I agree. It's going to grow and grow. And we're, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, like you have this theory of like each each bull run, there's a new um, cohort of people that, that buy it. A lot of people will leave. Some people will stay. 
I wonder how big that group is going to be now. Because basically, if you look at these stats, you know, like 70 or, or it's probably a bit more now, like of Bitcoin didn't move in one year. I think it's over 55 that didn't move in three years. Like it's noobs versus psychopaths. <laughs> I tweeted last week. Like, I think that's really that. Like this, like you, you cannot challenge our personal conviction anymore. So the only thing you can do is catch up if you're new and you're going to basically be forced to adopt it and forced to like follow the rules of the system which is you know i think the beauty of bitcoin the the forced incentives like it's a mutually beneficial thing it's not a zero sum thing right so um if you make this content that helps me and if i make my content it helps you and if you know people talk here on stage it also helps everyone or michael saylor going to a bitcoin development company also helps everyone so that's also how I see like these ETFs in a sense like it's funny because they are driven by greed right they they are driven by number go up like we all were in the beginning but they are going to realize soon enough that they cannot escape it anymore right like they have to continue doing this they have to continue adopting bitcoin in a sense and i've always viewed bitcoin as an experiment which is basically it either goes to zero or it's the black hole value, right? And it's not going to zero, so it's going to be the other thing. Like there is no in-between end state, in my opinion. So because you have this Wall Street adoption, the zero is out of the question, so. So how yeah. close do we get to that horizon line of the black hole oh, in the God, next 10 yeah. years? Because obviously, yeah. you know, so Michael Saylor yesterday on stage said, He's thinking 40, 42 quarters or so, mm -hmm. you know, quarter one this year, which we're wrapping up now this month to end of 2034 when there's 99% of the Bitcoin mined, 1% left. Um, you know, I, I was talking with Preston. I think that, I, I think, you know, that's, that's not, you know, some people I think are interpreting it as saying, oh, by 2034, Bitcoin's everywhere. It's like, no, I, I, I think that's just the stage. And then there's the next stage and the next mm -hmm. one, next one. So the next 10 years... Yeah, you know, because that's a long enough time horizon for big things to change, but not long enough that, you know, we're going to be gone to see it. So, I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't know. What do you think is going to happen in the next <sighs> 10 years? So, again, I don't have, like, a macro or finance background, but I do think the current system is stretched so far already, right? Uh, today, someone shared with me there was a U.S. presidential candidate, like, uh, like an independent one. I don't know which election, but let's say like four or five elections back. I don't know who that was, but that was like a, apparently like a billionaire guy. Uh, and he also talked about the deficit, the deficit, we should solve the deficit. You know, uh, nothing changed. And uh, yesterday there was a presentation of uh, James Lavish, which who's amazing. And he showed that chart and he says, this is what key, like the chart of the deficit growing and the spending growing and the spending overtaking the fake GDP basically. No, like he said, this is what keeps these people awake. You know, like it must be a dreadful feeling for Yellen and and Co. Like to and Powell, like to wake up and be like, damn, like how how can I keep pretending that this still works? You know, and I I feel it's stretched so much that I, I it has to be within ten years that this thing explodes in a way, and I I I don't know what will happen. But uh, yesterday I saw a tweet of Stack Hotler. I don't know if you follow him. It's like a guy in the Swiss Alps. He's anonymous. Oh, I did actually. The one time I checked Twitter, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It, it yesterday got there popular. was one about like, is America playing chess? You know, are they milking the dollar cow and you know sharing the inflation across the world while simi simultaneously also getting into Bitcoin? And yeah, maybe you can link to that thread. But I would recommend everyone to read it because it makes so much sense. Like. Okay, this thing is going to explode and it, it better be a controlled demolition, right? So let's export the inflation around the world while we are also getting a lag into Bitcoin. Because then you actually reinvent yourself, right? Because if they just let it go, then there's a power vacuum eventually, like nobody, like that's very, war. yeah, that's probably war. So to save yourself, you have to, it's basically like you kill yourself, but if you do it in a controlled demolition and 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 you already get into this new system, then that could be your your saving in a sense. And that that tweet just resonated so much. But it's also about 
thinking like are these people actually thinking like that is it that simple you know it's obviously not simple but if you can put it in a tweet it sounds pretty it sounds pretty simple you know so yeah. yeah it's just fun it's 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 i i dubbed bitcoin now entertaining for me like the development of bitcoin i try to contribute you know with the podcast and stuff like to to share hopefully different threads that people individually will pull on to get themselves down you know the bitcoin rabbit hole and orange pill themselves like i don't think you can orange pill another person right so that's like kind of kind of my goal but yeah i know i understand this so i'm just watching it unfold and yeah it's just fun it's fun to watch it's fun to actually realize that you already came to a certain conclusion and you acted and now you can see it play out that's yeah pretty cool actually like really rewarding also personally for me like it's it's just fun yeah yeah it's definitely rewarding to me you know you know have people say that my stuff was helpful to them um or encourage them um you know the most the most common ones i get are you know that oh the videos help me think something new right yeah. or they help me consider a different perspective right of course the other one is the whole self custody thing right that mm. you know Basically, I help someone take self custody, at, you know, Bitcoin Advisor, and then you know they get SIM card swapped or you know whatever, or you know then yeah, basically they're just grateful for that. But I, it, 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 it's humbling too because, frankly, you realize how low the bar is, and I don't want to yeah. make that sound negative. But, no, it's true. But you, you you realize that, gosh, all you need for a lot of people is tell them that. Things may not be okay, but they might be okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, for a lot of people, that's like so much more than what they're getting anywhere else. Um, you know, wh wh whether, I mean, whether that's a media problem or, you know, whatever, but I mean. Well, yeah, it's not I, like I, the I bar is yeah. low in a bad way. It's the fact that you are doing something and I'm trying to do something and other people are trying to do something that is the bar the bar is try act upon what you think is true and apparently that bar is very low and so that's why you know you've been doing this YouTube thing a bit longer than me but I also get these comments you know that people say like oh wow you orange pilled me that well again like I don't believe I do that but like individually but if you can help another person think differently and improve their life just by sharing your thoughts, that's crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. And I don't know where these people are that comment, but that's the magic of the internet, right? And the fact that you act, the fact that you do that is already, I think, inspiring for other people because everyone is in their individual journey, right? Like people understand that if you, if you go get like five things in the grocery store and it's $50 or euros, you're like, that doesn't really make sense. Like what is going on here? And then if you see someone from the White House, let's say, let's take America as an example, right? Like at a press conference, like, yeah, the numbers are great. It's all resilient and fine. And uh, when you just came from the supermarket and then when you think like, hmm, does it make sense? I have to do something. And then you come across any type of content written by any type of person who also tries their best to understand this thing. Then that is already enough because you're helping someone starting on that path of learning what they think they want to learn. And if you do that in a genuine way and you know that you're genuine, then that's amazing. Like that's, it's just fun. It's fun for, for me. It's fun. I think like for you, it's same thing. You know, like you get to meet these people that inspired you before. You get to meet people that listen to you and uh, you improve their life like that. I think that in essence is what it's all about. And then it's totally not about money. It's about just, uh, it's also validation for your own thinking, I think. Yeah. Like that you can trust yourself in what you did for yourself. That that actually also worked because you can convey it to other people. You know, I think you have that journey. Yeah. You're like your first two videos blew up because it's like a different way of approaching the same subject, but you approach it in how it worked for you. And apparently that also works for other people. Yeah, 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 I was surprised. Yeah, you mentioned the first few videos. The first few videos I posted on YouTube did not do well. They got like maybe, I think it was about a dozen views over the course of a month or two. 
but it was the Twitter thread that. Oh yeah, Deadline. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We but that, still, fault inspired yeah. on yeah. that, right? But, yeah. but, but the funny thing is that then the videos did really of course, well. Yeah. yeah, but people just weren't seeing them, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you oh, what'd you say? You just said something. You said, um, oh yeah, that it's not about the money in. To me, it's not even about Bitcoin, right? It's not about the money for me, but it's not about it's not even about Bitcoin. To me, the fun thing, the thing I, I enjoy doing and want to do more is you, you make a good point, but you don't orange pill people, right? And and likewise, likewise, I, I, I don't I don't want this to sound like a savior complex of like, oh, you, you got to go out and save the world. But I mean, it's like I want to hopefully encourage people perhaps on their own mm. action, right? Their own will. Yeah. Um, reorient their value structure in a way that I think is going to be better for the world and, and better for them too, right? And and I think when I found Bitcoin, you know, that really clicked with me. It's like, oh, if I want to have an impact on the world, again, not out of an egotistical, I want to be special, but like if I want to, if I want to impact people, if I want to help people, this is like the most obvious thing because I think, Bitcoin's the future. I think that's the future of money and culture or whatever. And I think the people in that are not just prominent people within the Bitcoin sphere, but eventually if a greater, greater portion of the world becomes Bitcoinized, right? Like those people are going to have a large impact on the entire world. And I mean, to me, to me, the fun thing with coming here in these conversations is not, oh, Bitcoin's number go up and, and it's not, although that's pretty cool, especially right now. <laughs> But I mean, it's not just that though. It's also that, dang, these people are going to probably have a big influence on the world and, yeah. and to be on the receiving end, to have had personal conversations with them is really meaningful. But then also to know that hopefully I've had some positive impact on them as well as positive impact on the people behind us, mm-hmm. right? Coming along. It's like, to me, that's the exciting thing. And Bitcoin is simply a means to the end of hopefully fostering good connections and, and friendships and building a better tomorrow, right? I mean, it's like, you know, there's, I know lots of people building awesome stuff outside of Bitcoin, right? Mis- you know, missions, companies, whatever, but it's just Bitcoin is, I think, maybe by you in a factor of 10, yeah. the, the, the most efficient way to accelerate accelerate a better mm. future in, in the world, I guess, yeah. I suppose. I don't know. Kind of well, rambling on, but I, that, no, no, to me, that's I what's fun about great. this. Like, the action is the inspiration. The like, action the, is no inspiration. No one is going to yeah. copy your thoughts for themselves. It's not going to be like a one-on-one transfer of, of what you think to another person's mm-hmm. mind. Yep, yep. It's like, oh, he said something. Oh, inter- oh I'm going to dive into that more. And then you find someone else who talks about that subject and Mm -hmm. then you go even deeper, right? It's like when I was younger, like one of my favorite websites was, uh, it was a Dutch page, but it's like startpage.com, right? And you had like all these blogs with different subjects and links to like other websites. And I've always viewed information like that. Like you just click on a thread and you click through and then, oh, you discover this other thing and you open three websites and you read something. But you always, you don't you don't download like an entire page in your mind. You take like one thing which gives you like a new angle for to search and you you click through and like that's, I think what this is as well, right? Like, so if if there's one person who takes one thing from this conversation and ends up dedicating their life to Bitcoin eventually, how cool is that? Like we did that just by sharing our thoughts, you know, not not even with that purpose, but to connect with each other. But that's the secondary effect also right. of that. And that's, I, you know. Second order effects, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. So I, I, it, it's just positive. It's fun. It's just fun. Like, again, like it's entertaining. It's fun. Yeah. Like I, I could, we could sit here all day and talk. Yeah, yeah. Know, we could sit just, here all day and talk. Yeah. But that's know. the rewarding thing, I think. Like once you really did that personal journey, I think that's what understanding Bitcoin is. It's not about intelligence. Definitely not about intelligence. It's about how how able are you to challenge your beliefs, thoughts, ego, be open to like other ideas, um, dissect information, and enjoy that process to then you know whatever you end up with. But in the in the context of Bitcoin, a lot of us, you know, there's not that many people that got Bitcoin and then went back to the fiat world. Maybe Peter Schiff's son, or you know, it's not that many people. Like once yeah. you get it, you are there, and that's not intelligence. It's about the personal, personal journey of understanding this. Yeah, yeah definitely. What's uh, 
what's your number one encouragement for people um, that are into this, learning about it, or just for the future wanting to have that kind of impact on other people? Is it start a podcast or is it just engage, engage with people as if you're equals, right? Which we all are. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one. But I think, yeah, what's your trade or what's your interest? Like, f- I don't know if you thought about like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast before. I, I I had like five conversations, I think seven months ago in a week, I had five conversations with different Bitcoiners just to connect like from Twitter. And like with all these conversations, I thought, hey, there's parts of this that I think could be interesting for others. Like I should have recorded this and then shared this, right? And then I was like, yeah, why why don't I do that? Why don't I spend two hours a week or three hours a week to just record conversations and share it with others? And then I thought like, okay, that's that's what I'm going to do. It's not my trade or not my background or nothing, but I just enjoy talking about this thing that really excites me. And so whatever your trade or interest is, like you can apply everything. You can apply everything to Bitcoin because Bitcoin... Bitcoin is the base layer of information uh, that we share, which is what we call money. Then you can do a- you can do anything, like whatever company you have, whatever trade you have, you can contribute to this. Um, I don't know, maybe that's too broad of an answer, but I think that's it. Like it doesn't. It, it's. I asked Jeff Booth, like, uh, how do you see the future of Bitcoin? And he was like, that's now. Like you can move now. There's no waiting or anything. It's here. It works. So if you find this even remotely interesting, I, I, my biggest encouragement would be like just to study more and yeah, challenge yourself. I think the main thing is challenge yourself and don't, don't be afraid, be encouraged by all these other people that also challenged themselves and they figured it out and they adopted the thing that they view as something that helps them, right? It's programmatic truth, Bitcoin. So it helps us to kind of circumvent the corruptibility that we all have. And with the Bitcoin system, we adopt the rules. Everyone that uses the system adopts the same rules. And you know that those rules are incorruptible by a single entity. And that is what makes it trustless. And that helps you free your mind in so many ways because the whole zero sum mindset that the fiat money creates, that that's what actually messes up your mind. But it's hard to get past that, well, fail basically, right? Like you, you don't know that you know that way, <laughs> basically. So you have to find that little opening um, to, to, to go through that and explore a bit more. And it's not s- simple eventually when you look back, but it's very hard. It's not... Uh, it's not easy. So I think that's, yeah, that's would be my main encouragement, like study. And if you get it, a- apply whatever you can, whatever your trade is, apply that to Bitcoin in whatever way. Like any way is fine. There's no wrong way mm-hmm. to uh, contribute to Bitcoin, I think. Yeah. 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 I think something else that probably is both encouragement and advice for people listening, but also just something else I wanted to mention too, is that I think one thing you're doing right is you're doing lots of iterations. You're doing a lot of shows, right? Mm. Yeah. So I, I think that is such a huge key because, to, frankly, I feel like I've gotten two years of um, growth online. And I don't say that in terms of subscribers or followers. I mean, well, I am, but I'm also saying it in terms of uh, people that care about my message or, or you know, I, I mean, so yes, in the service shallow way but mm-hmm. I also mean like you know personal like my life change I mean I'm sitting here with you in this beautiful spot yeah that's wild hey Daz how you doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll be on just a second yeah. Um, but yeah you know my, my, my point is that a year ago when this little journey of mine started of learning and having you know everything you were just saying it hit me that why would I do one show a week I mean like you said you do five I was, I was like no yeah, I do I do one now but I yeah, want to yeah, do yeah, more know, but, but, but five yeah, the, conversations yeah the iteration mm-hmm. yeah. is also like now me mm-hmm. being a guest with you it helps me uh, yeah. um, construct my thoughts also better right mm-hmm. and that's what uh, my main goal for my podcast is just learn more <laughs> like yeah. how can I construct my own thoughts better and that's I think what you mentioned when you say like the personal growth is right. that yeah. Just continuing that path. It is a never-ending thing, but yeah. the more you can 
construct your thoughts about this subject and you know and all of its implications better the more you directionally kind of like put your mind towards this thing and that mm -hmm. i think frees up the energy to also enjoy life more than w when you are in this zero sum fiat mindset yeah. basically so that's like a a third or fourth order effect maybe even right. from from this and that's yeah i also could have never thought of that before but i think yeah. same for you you have an even longer journey with the content creation like it's just it's super rewarding and yeah. once you deliver value um, a money will come right like it would be awesome to spend full time on this like yeah. i want to do that too mm -hmm. but it's not the time yet so but that's fine yeah. so i know where i know i know the direction so that's yeah. that's enough yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I can tell you definitely care a lot, and you definitely put out a lot of iterations. So, I mean, there's there's no, I mean, someone with more money and more time is not going to come close to someone like you or me because we put in three times the iterations and we have five times the passion, you know, and ultimately it's not about success. It's about building a better life. It's about having the sun yeah, come great. out and be a more beautiful day, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, man. Well, thanks, thanks also so much for inviting me and yeah, super happy fun to. to chat and to meet in real life, man. Like I know you uh, are so much taller than I thought you'd be. <laughs> Everyone says you, you, that. You yeah. said you said hi, how you you know, and I see you. I'm like, is that yeah. what you think it is? <laughs> yeah, I'm slouched under the webcam. You know. Yeah, I know that's people. what you said. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's I, funny actually. I met Eric Kaysen yesterday. He's yeah. also kind of tall, and he says like, you have Breedlove Phallus. Hoddle and Case and he said and Case said I'm the smallest and I was like huh I think Hoddle is like a short guy yeah. but he's like six two or something yeah, Hoddle not <laughs> apparently yeah yeah, yeah, yeah know, he's like tall big guy, yeah so yeah. that's fun yeah uh, yeah but uh, yeah awesome man thanks so much yeah till next time yeah appreciate it definitely cheers man great cheers indeed. <laughs>